Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, hanging out, chilling. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing really well. I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm working on a dark, dark photo. Uh, that's what this video is about. It's all about how do you fix underexposed or dark photos in Luminar and how do you brighten them up uh, in the right areas because you don't want to blow out the highlights or uh, just make the sky you know, completely too bright. So it's, it's always a delicate dance to manage the light and that's what I'm talking about in this video. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Hit that uh, uh, subscribe button down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like my videos, which is helpful to me because it tells YouTube that you like what I'm doing. And I hope that you do. So thanks for coming back. And uh, by all means, don't hesitate to leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Okay, here's a photo. It's kind of dark. Um, it's a sunset shot. And yes, I see the spot in the sky right there. And there's probably a couple of others. But um, I'm not going to take them out because I got the raw file here. I'll, I'll do that later. Anyway, uh, I don't know about you, but a lot of times I'm shooting either brackets or I'm just shooting and I end up with kind of darker photos. Um, I tend to err on the side of shooting a little bit darker than I do lighter. Like when I'm shooting brackets for HDR, I kind of err with the negative uh, side, like I expose to the left, as they say, right? So a little bit darker. So consequently, um, I have lots of sets of brackets. I don't always make HDRs. Often I'll just take a single exposure, whichever one I feel like is the best one from the bracket set, and edit that single exposure in Luminar. That's kind of my thing in terms of how I do it. Not my thing, but like my, uh, my process, for lack of a better word. So I have a lot of photos like this that are fairly dark. And of course, um, that's too dark. And so there's a number of different ways that I work through trying to lighten them. And uh, I'm going to walk through some of the options that I use. Okay, the first place I normally start is in the light tool. I'm in the essentials tab, which is the first one over here. So I'm gonna click on light. You've got a few options here, so I'm gonna walk through them. And some of them I've uh, done deep dive videos on, which I will point to in the corner each time. So the first most obvious thing is exposure. So if you drag the exposure slider to the right, of course, the photo gets brighter. You're increasing the exposure. Here's the thing to think about and that is the exposure slider is global in nature. What I mean by that is it affects the entire photo. So if you're dragging it to the right to brighten the photo, you're not just brightening the dark parts, you're also brightening the parts that are already kind of bright. So I'm often um, either skipping the exposure slider or if it's pretty dark like this, I might use it a little bit, maybe just give it a nudge, maybe something like that. But I wanna be careful because I don't want to uh, create uh, the opposite problem, which is this guy's too bright, right? I like this guy the way it is. I think it looks nice. I think it looks natural. I'm going to go play with color later, of course. But um, in terms of the light values in the sky, I think it looks fine. So I would be gentle, I guess is the word, with the exposure slider. I'm going to reset that. The next obvious thing for brightening the dark parts is shadows. And so uh, you can drag that over here to the right. And you can see that I'm, I'm doing that now. Another thing to think about when you're lifting shadows is the difference between the shadows and highlights is the contrast in the image, right? The dark parts and the bright parts, the difference between those is contrast. Contrast is necessary and looks good, generally speaking, in like every photo. So if you're not careful with shadows, you start getting into this realm, right? Which is where I've brightened the shadows a whole lot and sure you have a lot more visibility into that part of the image, but it's become very flat. And what I mean by that is it's lacking contrast because I've brightened the shadows so much. So I've evened out the tones so much that there's very limited contrast. In some ways, that's one of the things that I think people don't like about HDR is you get this even distribution of light. I always go back in and add contrast because I like having contrast in images. But um, often you'll see HDRs that, you know, they're going to be detailed and maybe over the top colors and stuff, but you're going to see the shadows look like that. And I think that turns off a lot of people, just uh, my opinion. So be careful with that, uh, but it's something to think about. All right, I hit reset. The other thing is blacks. Now, blacks is different, and I did a video, which I'll put right there. And in that video, I talk about the difference between shadows and blacks. I also talk about the difference between highlights and whites. So I think that may be something that you want to go look at. So blacks can come into play, but really, here's what I would probably do on this image is, let me hit reset there. I'd probably take the exposure up a little bit, maybe something about like that, and then pull up the shadows, um, some, but not a ton. And then I would probably go play with smart contrast because I want to have some contrast in the image. Uh, and this is where when you're adding contrast, you're deep, you're increasing the difference between the bright and the dark parts of the image. So 
I just drag shadows to the right to lighten them. But then when I'm adding contrast, it's going to bring back a little bit of shadow. So if I go like that, you're going to get a lot. I don't want that, but I do want a little contrast. So that's a long way of saying when you're lifting the shadows, keep in mind two things. Number one, you don't want to lift all the shadows and make it so bright that there's no contrast left in the image. And number two, um, I recommend adding contrast back while you're lifting the shadows and kind of playing with that. By the way, this is probably also the time I recommend playing with the highlights just to make sure you keep all that in check. But look for a balanced image that has some contrast in it. I think that's more natural, and I think that's what people would expect to see. And um, I, personal opinion, I just think it looks a little bit better if the photo has some contrast, whereas if you go like that, that just doesn't really look good at all, right? So let me pull that back. Um, I'm gonna go back to wherever I was. I don't really know where I was because I can't rewind the video while I'm recording it, but something like that. I lifted the shadows a little bit, I lifted the exposure a little bit, but yet I added contrast, which kind of counteracted those two. So again, this is the dance that I'm talking about. I recommend experimenting. Every image is gonna be different. Um, every time you edit an image, you might have a different mood about you or a different plan with the photo, and that's cool. Embrace your creativity, go do what you want. I think that's important. These are just things that I think about, so I'm just sharing. But here we go. I mean, if I show you the before and after, there's before, fairly dark, after, I think a fairly nice looking image from the standpoint of the light distribution, right? I've lightened the shadows a pretty good amount, but um, I didn't blow out the sky. It's not just a, a white mess or anything. And I didn't lift the shadows, especially over here in this rock in this right corner. I didn't lift the shadows so much that uh, there's no contrast whatsoever. Keep in mind, I added back smart contrast, as you know. So this is probably where I would stay with this photo and then dive into temperature, tint, and then get into the color phone that I always like to have, and then wrap it up by taking that spot out of the sky. Let me hit reset. And having done that, the next thing also in the light tool is of course the tone curve. Now, if you don't know how the tone curve works, hey, there's a video, thanks, um, check it out. But, uh, so this won't be a tutorial on that. Super powerful, it gives you a lot of ability to come in here and do things like this, where maybe you wanna pull down, you know, control the highlights, but maybe pull up some of the mid-tones and some of the, um, ooh, I'm getting too much there, aren't I? So it's hard to do this and talk to you at the same time. Um, but uh, that's not gonna look good either. I think I'm gonna go here, something about like that. Anyway, it requires experimentation. Again, every image is different. Tone curve is super powerful, but you can see, I mean, just kind of messing around while I'm talking to you, I went from, again, fairly dark base image to a much more evenly lit um, image now using multiple control points here or anchor points along the tone curve. So the point here is that the light tool is your friend. Um, you've got the exposure. I, I recommend contrast as well. You've got shadows and blacks and you've got tone curve. So you've got so many tools right here. And honestly, I start every image with light. It just makes sense. So that's um, that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Now, I'm gonna hit reset. I'm gonna go over here to AI Enhance. So if you're new to Luminar or post-processing slash editing your photos, this is a great place to start because this AI accent tool is like the easy button. You drag it to the right and you can see it's doing a, a great job. Notice it's not just lifting the exposure. It's having a little bit of impact on contrast, a little bit of impact on color. It's helping to manage those highlights. So you can see the before and the after. The, the sky's not really getting brighter. It's very smart in that way. So it's a great tool. I use it all the time, just because I might be a fairly advanced user of Luminar, and I know how a lot of the tools work, and I use a lot of them. I, I'm not opposed, and I'm certainly not above, just getting into AI Accent and dragging it to the right and saying, ooh, look at that, that looks great. Um, now that's probably, uh, it's rare that I, that would be the only thing I would do to an image, it'd be very rare for me, but if you're new to it, AI Accent's a great place to start. And then you might look at that and say, okay, I like where I am, but maybe I wanna brighten the sky a little bit. So you may, maybe you come over here and say, maybe I wanna increase the highlights. You know, I'm just kind of making it up here. Maybe I wanna increase the whites. Maybe I wanna bring up the exposure a tiny bit. Um, and, and maybe play with these after you do AI accent. Just an idea, it just depends. I'm gonna hit reset here. I didn't do a lot in light. Um, but AI Enhance, specifically the AI Accent, is absolutely great at helping you brighten up the darker parts of an uh, underexposed photo. Okay, time to hit reset. And the next one I'm gonna pop into is on the Pro tab, and that's of course Adjustable Gradient. 
And hey, once again, I did a video, which I'll put there. Um, as the name implies, it's adjustable and it's a gradient. You get to pick top or bottom, figure out uh, or define for yourself what you consider top and bottom, and then play with the, the sliders here. In this case, I would set orientation. I would click that. I'm gonna move this up a little bit because what I wanna do is I wanna get more of that uh, lower half of the photo to be considered bottom. So there I've kind of readjusted that orientation and now I'm gonna click on bottom and I'm gonna say exposure and uh, there we go. I might actually come to top and give that a little bit of boost too. But you can see, I mean, I had a big impact on the photo just with those uh, two simple moves. And that's what's great about adjustable gradient is because if it's a photo like this, where you have um, not just a dark photo overall, which I have, there's the original, but darker in the bottom and brighter in the top in this case, or brighter in one side and you know um, darker in the other regardless, you have the ability to separate that with the orientation slider and make it a vertical, or you can make it horizontal, right? And take left and right and separate that. Um, but that allows you to brighten the exposure in whichever section of the photo you need to work on. So lots of control, lots of power, not to mention you have these other tools here, which I talked about in that video. So I would come in here and play with the warmth and the vibrance and that sort of thing until I got it how I wanted it. Note you also have contrast. So that comes in really handy. But the third tool that I would work on, first being light, second being AI uh, enhance, and third would be adjustable gradient. Okay, let's hit reset. And the last one is dodge and burn. So I haven't done a video about this, but I probably will. But it basically allows you to paint in a lightning or a darkening adjustment. So you just click on the, the filter or the tool and you click start painting and it says lighten up here. And you can pick strength anywhere from zero to 100. And then you can pick your size, etc. I'm just gonna pick 100 and I'm just gonna start painting. So you just start using your cursor to mouse and paint over this. And you can see, and I bled over into the water, right? I'm doing that kind of on purpose. I'm just showing you what I can do to the photo. I can also come over here. So the beauty of this tool is you have fine grained control over where in the photo you want to add lightness or add darkness, right? You might have a bright photo and you want to darken it so that you would add, you would just click on darken instead of lighten. In this case, we're focused on the lightning. Um, and so that's what you do. You just come over here and paint on it. Now I've already got the strength at 100, but if I had the strength lower, I could paint and paint and kind of stack that until I got it to the way I wanted it. Here's the thing, I use this tool sparingly. It's a great tool, it gives you a lot of power, it's very flexible. I use it sparingly simply because I prefer to cover uh, the larger areas with the gradient or the AI enhance um, or the different tools in the, uh, or sliders in the light tool that I talk about. I tend to do those which aren't exactly global, but they cover a you know broader uh, portion of the photo. And then if I need to, I will come back and do something with dodge and burn just to customize, or maybe I need to hit a certain small spot or something like that. I will use dodge and burn for kind of the selective small things, and I'll use the other filters for the bigger, broader things. That's just how I like to do it. That by no means is the rule or the law or whatever. I'm gonna hit done. You can kind of see what I did there. Obviously that looks terrible, um, but that's just an example of how you paint in using dodge and burn. So that's really it. And in, in, in my uh, personal opinion, as I said, I would start with light or AI enhance, uh, but I would probably personally come in and start with light, make some adjustments there with uh, you know the contrast, but also the shadows, maybe the exposure in this case, maybe the tone curve. Uh, and then start balancing that out. And I, um, really, I guess what I'm saying is, I would start there, but I may use AI Enhance as well, and I may actually come back and hit it with Adjustable Gradient or Dodge and Burn. So in other words, these tools are not mutually exclusive. You can use any of them and or all of them on any photo. Um, you know that because the filters are here, but I'm just saying don't feel mentally like, okay, well, I did AI Enhance, so I don't wanna use a light tool, or I use a light, so, I'm not gonna use dodge and burn or adjustable gradient because I already did it. It's your photo, do whatever you need to do to balance out the light. Take advantage of all the tools that are in Luminar. Use them to uh, you know, bend them to your will and do what it is that you need to do because that's what it's here for, right? You have these tools in the toolbox, use them. Um, and that's really how I would go about, those are really the four key things that I do to basically fix an underexposed photo or to fix underexposed portions of a otherwise nice photo. So 
that's how I do it. I'm going to go edit this photo now and um, go from there. So I appreciate you watching, my friends. Thank you very much. By all means, like I said, uh, subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about it. Give me a thumbs up and say, hey, Jim, good job. Um, if you liked it. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. You, you don't want to give me a thumbs down. Do Come on. We're friends. You don't want to do that. Okay. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. Take care, my friends. Have a great day. I'll see you later. And adios.